years. I've been doing this since 2018. I started in the Museum Live, of course, and there at the Museum of Illustration in Manhattan, uh, we are a very small museum. We are actually in the building um, that belongs to the Society of Illustrators. It's been there since, they've been in there since two, uh, sorry, 1901. <laughs> so a long time, over 100 years, well over 100 years. And we're small, so we can't have a lot of live participants. We usually have about 25 families. And um, it's such a thrill to be able to do this virtually because we can bring in fantastic illustrators from their own studios. So we get to see what they're doing behind the scenes in their studios. And we can also welcome and invite uh, participants from all over the world. So we have had people coming in from all oh, different parts of Asia, Korea, Singapore, China, Japan, then all over Europe. I've had messages from Poland and France and the UK, Ireland, um, all over America, West Coast, uh, further south, north, and Canada. So welcome everybody this morning. I would like to thank uh, very much the Bruce J. Heim Foundation, who sponsor our program and bring it to you all for free. Registration is free. And um, they firmly believe in the belief that children's books, or all books, in fact, uh, greatly inspire and uh, help develop children um, with the future and um, we are very uh, grateful to them because they are helping uh, with our programs for K through 12 uh, students and also we have a lot going on at the museum online as well as some live shows that if you are in Manhattan or live in the area and you want to come in and visit you can register online. Uh, coming up uh, soon is the Maurice Sendak exhibit, which is always exciting to see. Um, you can go in, you're all familiar, I'm sure, most of you who, uh, at least in America, are very familiar with Maurice Sendak, Where the Wild Things Are, one of the uh, go-to books when you're learning how to do picture books. <laughs> um, so go see that and other exhibits on right now. Also, we have other programs. I do an after-school program called Creating Characters and Stories. So if you have any after school uh, time in your schedule, do join for some of that in um, April and May. And also coming up, there'll be another illustrator coming in um, April. But this month, our invited and featured illustrator, author illustrator, I should say, is Scott Magoon. Now, I love Scott Magoon's books. I think they're absolutely awesome. And in fact, he's done books with uh, other uh, writers in the past as well, like um, Ruth um, uh, Kranz Rosenthal, correct? Yeah, and um, one of my favorite little books that he, he did with her is called Spoon. Love that book so much. And um, this is an awesome book as well. So the book that um, Scott's going to feature today is Linus the Little Yellow Pencil. And there's so much in this book that it amuses me and um, is sentimental to me. I just think it's a fantastic book. If you haven't already read it, got it from the library or bought it, I really think you'll enjoy it. It's a great book. And he's going to show us all about the book, how he wrote it, what he thought about with his ideas and how he created all those amazing illustrations that are inside the book. And so Scott is a, a native New Englander. He's um, always lived up in the Northeast um, in beautiful parts of the world up there. And um, actually went to university for English literature and um, was an avid reader when he was a child, as well as an out loves the outdoors and other things, but he did read a lot of books. And of course, when you're reading books, your imagination is always alive and you're thinking visually as well. So that led to him taking some um, drawing lessons and really it's a self-taught illustrator um, and finding your own style is such a key thing. So practice, practice. And um, we're now going to turn over to Scott Magoon, author, illustrator, extraordinaire. I'm delighted to have you here this morning. Thank you for joining us. Oh my goodness. Claire, thank you so much. And thank you to the entire Society of Illustrators uh, there in New York City. I have such fond, fond memories of those uh, original art show nights where uh, you'd open up the doors to countless, um, it, you know, children's book world uh, industry illustrators, authors, editors, art directors, uh, into your uh, into the gallery there, and um, we would walk around and look at the year's absolute best uh, artworks. Uh, each year, that show seems to me anyway to get better and more beautiful. Um, this year was no exception. This year, uh, it was all virtual, of course, because of the pandemic. 
but you, the team there pulled an amazing uh, show together. Um, I mean, it was a shame that we weren't able to see it in person or I wasn't able to see it in person, but there was an online component, so I was able to see it online and it was gorgeous. So just a quick shout out if anyone's, I don't, I think it's still up. I think people are still able to view it online. Uh, um, is it down now? Yeah, we're on to new things now, but there's always amazing art to see. Oh my Student gosh, shows, it's professional shows, incredible. Um, permanent collection. We have so much to offer for illustrators. And thank you for acknowledging the society <laughs> for that. Yeah. Oh yeah, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> oh no, my, my pleasure. Um, welcome everybody, it's great to be here. I'm coming to you live from my studio, as Claire has mentioned. Uh, it's my little studio from which I uh, sent out my Scott Studio Storytime, which many of you may have seen, may not have seen. Those are all up on my website, scottmcgoon.com, if you want to. Yeah, check those out, they're amazing. Uh, thank you, thank you, catch <laughs> up on those. After... Your dragon was such a great hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, thanks. <laughs> Oh, good. You know, you drew a beautiful dragon. Uh, Claire drew a uh, dragon. I, a dragon. And... I had some students draw the dragon. I love the dragon. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, check out that. In fact, um, Lindsay, who's behind the scenes at the Society, will type in the chat um, some information like website addresses and things like right. that. So, yeah, that yeah. Um, we're going to do something similar today uh, where we're going to, I'm going to read Linus to you. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I came to create Linus, draw Linus. Um, a little bit. Then we're going to do a nice sort of Linus themed drawing activities. We're going to do some uh, drawing with just the color yellow, uh, black, and red. That's going to be really cool. We're going to draw a reductive drawing, which means we're going to draw with pencil and eraser. Uh, if you have a pencil, that should be fine. Markers are good. Uh, obviously, erasers. I'm going to use charcoal. So if you have charcoal, that's going to be ideal. Uh, I have a kneaded eraser, which is sort of a smushy eraser. But if you want to use the end of your pencil eraser, that's cool too. Or a, 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 you know, a plastic eraser, that should work as well. Um, it'll be time throughout, I think, for questions, right, Claire? They can type them in in the- Yes, I do want to mention that. Thanks for um, uh, mentioning that as well, Scott. Um, so in the chat, don't forget to write your questions down for Scott. I will, um, whilst he's doing the workshop, I will like, ask him those questions and he'll generously and, uh, and have fun with answering those questions that you have. And also as you do your drawings, we love to see your drawings. So please do send them in. There'll be an email address that you can send them into and we wanna see those and I will share those with Scott as well. And we will feature oh, them on our Instagram. So please oh, do, cool. do that. <laughs> That's cool. That was one of my favorite parts of doing this Studio Storytime show was getting art in from uh, young artists and older artists who were watching the show. So yeah, please send them in everybody. We'd love to see uh, that, that would be fantastic have done way more illustrating for other authors than, than I have for my own books. Um, so I really felt like this book, Linus, was it's, it had been five years since my previous book, Breathe, about the little beluga whale. And it really felt like, oh my gosh, I, I got to get my, my name out there as an author more because I love to write. I feel like I have a lot of things I can say. And to me, kind of reemerging as an author illustrator felt you know, there was some pressure on me. And I felt like, okay, this book has got to sort of you know, rekindle, restart uh, my author illustrator days. And I felt like there was a lot kind of on the line. And uh, so that's the, that's the reason for this um, title. It's like, it's all on the line and literally and figuratively. All right, I'm just gonna talk briefly about the making of this book. It started off kind of as a shady story, Linus did, um, in that it's about this, it was originally about Ernie. And he was known as, at that point, very early on, and these are sketches, as the mean eraser. And it was really going to be up to Ernie to carry the story. It was really kind of about um, how he was kind of a villain and uh, Linus the pencil had to overcome the villain uh, as opposed to working together with him, which is what uh, we just saw happen. So <laughs> these are all sketches, they're very small thumbnails uh, that I did to kind of plan out the book or plot out the book. Um, not the way I work every single time, but it was for Linus. And you can see, I don't know if you can see on that left side there, the six panels, that is sort of Linus, I'm sorry, Ernie, kind of erasing himself into nothingness, slowly, slowly erasing himself until he disappears. And the idea behind that was that Linus just keeps drawing that whole time. He perseveres, he keeps being creative, doesn't listen to Ernie, the mean eraser, um, until finally he's able to, as you can see here, freely 
move about the page without uh, an eraser erasing his work. And of course, the symbolism there was we all should be like that. We should all just continue drawing on and not listen to the eraser. And eventually that voice in our heads that says it's not good enough will go away. Um, that was the original uh, story behind uh, Linus until the very end of the story originally, which is where <laughs> Linus meets another eraser uh, outside of himself because you know there's always a critic out there, right? So the last line of the book was, um, I believe it was, it ended in a draw. Um, that was my little pun there at the end of the original story. <laughs> but working with the editor, Rotan Muscovich at uh, Hyperion, Disney Hyperion, we kind of came around together, much like Linus and Ernie, Ernie did, to uh, thinking maybe this could be more of a, a positive story about uh, working with that, uh, you know, critical voice in your head, your creative side and the critical side, finding a way to work together. Um, and I love it. I think it really turned out um, all the better for it. Another thing I had to kind of think about and uh, work through was how do you make, how do you make a book about a pencil who really limited uh, facial feature action, limited, you know, no arms, no legs, not a lot of action a pencil can do, you know, and it draws with a, you know, a black graphite line, a gray line. How do you add color to that kind of a book? How do you make it visually interesting color-wise? Well, I figured I could have a lot of, you know, art supplies, like they could make their own color. So you can see here, I'm thinking, oh, maybe these different color markers come in um, and they make their own uh, color expressions. Um, maybe other, yeah, the other bits of um, art supplies make their own art. That was one way I was gonna get around Linus just making a very boring uh, gray line. Uh, another idea was to work in these post-it notes and have these colored papers uh, serve as the color of the book and add life and vibrancy to the, to the book. Here's, uh, these are actually just digital art squares that I assembled much like you would uh, post-it notes. I don't think this, uh, actually the lower right, I think kind of more or less made it in the upper left of the sun did not. Um, so that was my way around. How do you get color in the book? How does, and again, this gets back to, uh, how do you make a pencil's journey interesting visually? Um, really important to keep people's interest uh, on a visual level, keep them engaged with the art. How do we do this with a pencil that just kind of is a piece of wood that moves around? <laughs> how do you do that? Well, I thought maybe we could put him on some adventures and have him go through some really cool scenes, like the scene where he bursts out of the, uh, you know, pencil uh, sharpener. Uh, maybe he meets, a, he draws a dinosaur. That adds a little conflict and character. And that actually made the it in the book in a very uh, much more cartoony way when he draws the T-Rox playing the guitar. Uh, what if he drew um, fantastic locations? Uh, to make it look like he was actually in some other place uh, rather than a desktop or a, or a white piece of paper. Maybe he draws a door while Ernie erases, erases it. That would create some visual uh, interest, some visual conflicts. Um, so that was sort of, and a number of those ideas made it in the book and subsequent uh, ske you know, sketch rounds, but um, that was a challenge. Ernie, of, I'm sorry, Linus, of course, makes his way into the, uh, the great cave where he meets the mysterious uh, mentor of Smudge. Uh, that was one of my favorite uh, concepts in the book and it, it survived every single uh, iteration of the book. Um, originally he was called the, oh gosh, the Graphite Guru or some, some other name, but eventually we changed it um, to Smudge, which I, I, I love. Um, I think we could see a smudge puppet or a smudge soft toy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I tried to work in the smudge too in the later in the as Ernie, I'm sorry, as Linus starts with a squiggle, a scribble, and then a smudge. So he really kind of takes it to heart, literally and figuratively, as he uh, draws a smudge. Um, oh, at the end, you may recall there's that big post it note drawing where the judge, the glue judge, has uh, pronounced them the winner. This was my original idea that they would just draw a big graphite, a big pencil drawing on a wall uh, and Ernie would erase it. But Rotem, my editor, suggested, well, can we add a little bit more? It's going to be more uh, dramatic, more eye catching, more colorful. And she suggested, and uh, this was a genius idea. What if you incorporated the ideas of Chuck Close? Now, Chuck Close 
um, still around, still alive, still creating. He suffered a stroke back in the 80s, I want to say, and it left him with disabilities. He was unable to move his, uh, his legs, but he could still use his arms. And so he starts painting these gigantic wall-sized mosaics, uh, as you can see here. And uh, Rotem said, hey, maybe Linus and Ernie could do a little Chuck Close action uh, in their final drawing. So I gave it a shot. This was my early, early, like, how do I make a drawing using circles and squares? And, and then I put that on the wall. Rotem thought that looked great, but I thought, well, it's not truly a mosaic. It's really just still just a pencil drawing. What if then we worked in, what if we worked in um, the post-it notes? And that's what you saw uh, at the end of the book. And lastly, oh my gosh, anybody who knows me uh, out there, or maybe if you have read my books, know that I love puns. And <laughs> I try to work them into my daily life, much to my family's <laughs> chagrin, uh, because they are corny. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, I work them into my books wherever I can. So I wanted to work in these quote unquote puncils or <laughs> pencil puns. Uh, not all of these are in the book. If you read the book, you'll find several. Um, but I, these are the ones I came up with as I was writing the book. And uh, I just, I love this stuff. It's like a code. It's like uh, you're kind of just always thinking around the text and thinking around words and say, what, is, what can you pun on graphite? Can you pun on uh, lead? Can you pun on, uh, you know, uh, erasing? Um, so these are the ones that I, I came up with. I think that um, that was pretty much the challenge, some of the challenges I worked on in the book, it was a, probably about a six month uh, writing and sketching process. And then it took about a year to get the book out into the world. The entire book is digital with the exception of some uh, pen, uh, paper textures that I scanned in. Um, but the whole book is done digitally. Uh, I use my uh, iMac and Wacom tablets to make the art. I'm gonna show you a little bit about that later on in my talk today, but I just thought it was interesting to point out, yes, even the cover, that's all digital, um, but I really like to make digital artwork look um, natural, like it's real world media. All right, I think with that, what I would like to do is switch back over to my camera view. Here we go, okay, I'm back. Hopefully you can see me in my crazy hair. All right, so I think what we wanna do now is get your piece of paper out. I'm gonna have a larger piece of paper. You don't need this big of a piece of a paper. I'm using a large piece because I want to be able to show you what I'm doing. We're gonna use markers, but only a couple of colors. We're gonna, because it's a Linus day, we're gonna to stick to a yellow theme. It's, it could be any color yellow marker. It really can be any color you want. A very good color. Do we have matching markers? I don't need to. No. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> Not planned. That's cool, yeah. And um, I'm gonna use red as well. And we're gonna use black too. But again, you can use any color you want. This is just an exercise um, themed by Linus, uh, the little yellow pencil, because we're gonna use yellow. yellow. Um, I'm gonna set my timer too for this because I don't wanna run over uh, too much time. All right, here we go. When you hear the crickets, uh, I've got my crickets set on. That means we're, we're done with this part. All right, here we go. I'm also gonna move this chair over to the side. And I'm gonna use my stool so you can see my drawing a little bit better. Bear with me. All right. All right, we're, I, I love this drawing activity because it really, oh gosh, it's, um, it helps us to focus on shape and it helps us to focus less on details. We'll add details for sure, but it, it really just helps us to think about our step-by-step -step drawing process a little bit differently. And hopefully, I mean, I, I think it's fun. You may disagree. You might have a little more fun drawing uh, this way in the future. Um, you don't have to draw this way every time, but sometimes try this out. It's pretty neat. We're gonna draw with yellow color first, and we're gonna, gonna draw yellow shapes first. So you can set those other markers aside for the moment. Grab your yellow. Uh, again, if you really wanna use red, that's okay too. But we're gonna draw yellow things to start with. Uh, we're going to start with um, maybe a lemon over here. Lemons are yellow. Let's start with a, a, uh, a lemon shape. Uh, over here in the corner, let's do this. It's just like a little circle like this, right? 
and you can color that in. And I, you know, I had to get two, Claire, I had to get two of these markers because I just know that um, one is gonna die <laughs> mid drawing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. All right. And those lemons have like little outcroppings like this, right? There you go. Good. And if you want, you can always fill it in more later. Okay, good. We've got our yellow uh, lemon. Next, we're going to draw a little duck shape. Ducks, ducklings are yellow. We're going to draw a little yellow duckling. Let's um, let's start with, you know what? Let's start with a shape that looks like this. Fill that in. It kind of looks like could be a fortune cookie too, right? Almost or a wonton perhaps, but it's actually the beginnings of our duck. Next, we're going to draw a little circle up in here. Okay. Good. How are you guys doing at home? Good. I hope so. Hope you're following along. When we're done, hopefully this will be a nice big kind of kooky scene of yellow things. Good. All right. Let me just fix mine a little bit more. A little, there we go. Okay. Next up, how about a banana? Bananas are yellow. We're going to draw a nice big banana uh, over here. And bananas kind of look like almost like half moons almost. Mm -hmm. Just like this. Okay, we can fill that in too. And again, if you want to fill it in later, that's fine as well. But I'm going to fill mine in nice big and yellow. Yeah, so satisfying, especially as the marker starts to sort of sink into the paper and fill in areas that you had previously left white. It's just a nice feature of markers if you want it sometimes. Okay, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. All right, next up, how about a school bus? Sounds complicated, not at all. Not the way we're gonna do it today. Um, and now that I've said that, I gotta really deliver, right? No pressure. <laughs> um, we're gonna draw a big rectangle and let's, we're gonna bring it up a little bit above this duck because we went, eventually we wanna leave room for the wheels. So let's, I don't know, maybe get an inch or two above. Um, draw a nice big rectangle like this, okay? Before I get to the end though, I'm gonna kinda of come down a little bit like this, okay? Just shape just like that. I think my bus is going downhill. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> all right, you can draw like a shape like that. Oh, before we color that in, before we color that in, we have to add the windows ahead of time if you want windows in your bus. All right, so we're gonna draw a couple of squares like this. One square for the uh, driver, one square for the door, window below like that. All right, then we're going to do, let's do, I don't know, four windows or so. It doesn't have to be a ton. If you have room for only three, that's okay too. Okay. If you want to, you don't have to do this. You can draw circles in there for people's faces eventually. But we'll add in later. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm going to do it. Good. Okay. Now let's quickly... Um, Color in our, our bus. I love yellow. It's like one of my favorite colors now. Ever since I did the book, I'm just like, what a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, I remember I did this video interview. It was like 10 questions uh, in a minute. With a, with a, it was at a book show, and it was being filmed. And they asked me what my least favorite color was. And weirdly, I said yellow, and I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. This was well before I did this book, so I've since come to really love yellow. Um, but what a random question! Like, what, how are you supposed to answer that? I don't know what I would say now. It's usually your favorite color, right? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it's just so beautiful, it's sunny and light. Claire, do you have a favorite color? Well, I do love blue. I have to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Having grown yeah, up in Great Britain, uh, you know, blues. The blue sky. Like, yes. Yes. <laughs> makes Good me point. so happy. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. 
No, I love right. favorite colors. Those are usually the, the question. What is your favorite yeah. color, not your least favorite? Yeah, so. least favorite color, yeah. Um, all right, let's draw the sun because obviously there's always a yellow sun uh, in our happy scenes. Good. See what I'm saying though? We're starting with shapes. We're not worrying about details yet. And I think that's so important. And we'll talk about this more in my second drawing activity. Start with very simple shapes in combination, then add details as you go. And I think it's, I think you might find it far less um, frustrating. Let's try a little car over here. What do you think? Start with a simple line like this. And it kind of looks like a cloud. We're just gonna keep it super simple. Because again, it's more about shapes right now, not about details. We'll add details in a minute. Okay, good. And then maybe we can just draw some rectangles for um, buildings in the, in the distant background. We'll put some buildings in our scene. They can be any shape you want, really. Um, circle buildings might not come across, but um, triangular buildings, rectangular buildings, uh, square buildings. Ooh, let me fix mine here. All right, good, good. Okay, I hope yours is looking good. I hope yours is looking good, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. All right, let's, um, let's start adding some detail using our, our black marker now. Oh wait, you know what, we need something over here. Let's add some uh, flowers over here. Let's do yellow flowers, maybe some yellow tulips perhaps. Nice circle like this, and then a W to connect the half circle, okay? Half circle or a C and then a W. Okay, very simple. Um, we could do three. Uh, let's do another one up here. Do as many as you want, really. Just leave a little room around our lemon because we're gonna add some details to our lemon. Uh, um, I think that's probably a good start. You can close those in too if you want. Or not, you can even open. All right. But it's pretty fun so far, I think, working just with shapes. It takes a lot of pressure off, I think, um, when you're drawing to start with shapes. And then oh, add Lucy's as you asking if you could draw a pineapple, Scott. Could you draw a pineapple? I could draw a pineapple, sure. Sure. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Let's do a pineapple right here, like this. Okay. Okay. We, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till I use my black to add the leaves and the crisscross, okay? But I'm just gonna start with that shape just like that, okay? Good. All right, let's switch over to our black marker now. This is where it's gonna get cool and fun and really start to look like something other than just shapes. Although that's kind of beautiful, I think that's kind of lovely. Okay. Let's dive right into our school bus first. I think that's a great place to start. We're gonna add some wheels. And if you go between, you wanna stick between the uh, window here and the front hood and just draw a nice big circle just like this, okay? You can, you can color it all in. You can leave the hub there if you want. It's hard to draw this angle and draw a circle. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Good. We're going to draw a rear tire as well. Over here like that. Cool. Now we can add all kinds of other cool um, details. If you want, we can add, well, let's see. Let's add some nice lines up here like this. School buses have great um, stripes like this. Okay. I'm gonna add the door now, just like that. See what I mean about keeping the details separate? It once you know the space you have to work in, like the school bus, it's easier to add the stripes in later. It's easier, I think, to add the wheels in later rather than drawing all at one time. You really establish a very strong graphic base first, then move in and uh, charm them with the, with the details. Um, I'm going to kind of come add a few more lines too. You can really add a sense of shape, structure, um, when you add lines to something that's built. A building, for example, a vehicle, for example. Um, I think lines like this 
you know, even small, like I'm gonna draw like another small line, just like that. See what I mean? It just adds that much more info and that much more life uh, and structure to your vehicles, buildings, what have you. All right, if you want to, I'm gonna draw, if you wanna follow me on this, I'm gonna draw a couple smiley faces for the passengers and different hairstyles, perhaps, if you wanna go that far. Really just, I mean, it's super basic. As long as we indicate, you know, there's someone there, I think people like that. If you wanna draw shoulders as well, you can do that. See that? Yeah. Ears, crazy hair. All right, and if you want to, you can draw a little driver. I'm just gonna draw a profile of the driver. Let me do that right now, let me show you. Bus. Right. Cool. Okay. Now let's call this. Uh, I'm going to put um, some lettering on the side. I'm going to call it the SOI School, Society of Illustrators School. You guys can put your favorite school name on the side if you want. All right. Good. All right. Add a, maybe a hood line here. If you want to line, add a line for the grill, you can do that. Again, I think the more lines you add onto your drawing, it really kind of builds your car or building structure that much more. You see what I'm saying? See that? Yeah, really kind of works. built a neat little. What's that, Claire? I said it looks really great. Everybody's enjoying nice. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that could be, you know, that could be in a picture book. You know, I think that's um, kind of fun to do. All right. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's add, um, oh gosh. What can we do? Let's do our pineapple really quickly. I think for the pineapple, I think if we can kind of, and I haven't practiced this pineapple, but let's do this. Okay, something like that for one side. We're gonna do the same thing for another side of the pineapple, just like that, okay? Nice. And then, if you want to, you can add these diagonal lines like this. Make sure they're nice and spaced out, not too close together, because we're gonna go the other way like this. And we wanna keep those diamond shapes nice and open. Okay, what's that for pineapple? Pretty stylish. Um, Lucy will love that, right, Lucy? <laughs> Lucy, for the idea. Uh, I think you can draw whatever kind of expression you want on your son. My son's kind of smiling happily down on the scene. And um, you know what I meant to add was some lines like this, just to give it a little visual interest. There we go. Again, just using three colors on this drawing, but I think that just keeps us focused. That keeps the drawing coming out um, very conceptual, very sort of thoughtful um, in a way. All right, let's draw a person down here. Let's draw a nice little face on this lemon. That'll be a lemon person. Um, let's see, circle like that for an eye. Oh, that's my timer. Oh, <laughs> a few more seconds. <laughs> yes. You All right, we'll do sour, this really quick. A sour Please. expression. <laughs> oh my gosh, do a sour expression. It's too late for me, but you guys do a sour expression. All right. And um, let's add some here. I'm going to use this sort of chisel point of my marker to kind of make this little hairdo here. <laughs> make it kind of cute. Oh, yes. Right nice. there. Maybe some eyebrows as well. Okay, some dots, some scribbles. Nice, like that. We can also add some head and shoulders, let's do that. But I'm not going to color in the shirt. I'm just going to add some, maybe some stripes. And maybe this student has missed the bus. Although this person does not seem upset about it. I like how the two ends of the lemon make his ears. That was very good. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, let's finish our flowers too. Let's add some life there. Um, I think if we just add some stems like this, we can then add some leads onto those 
uh, as well. And again, I'm gonna use my handy dandy chisel tip marker like that. Get those flowers going. I'm gonna add a little um, pattern, I think, to my flowers too. Why not, right? That adds a little more visual interest. Again, just like I did with Linus, when you're only using a limited, limited color palette, you want to create visual interest in patterns with texture. That's kind of what we're doing with these, with these flowers. See that? Nice. Just adding a little something. If you want to, you can add these little, I think these are called pistils, if you want. Again, just adding some visual life, some energy, some uh, details goes a long way, especially when you're just using a very limited uh, palette like we're, like we're using here. All right, let's keep going. Let's, um, what should we tackle next? Let's do Banana Nana. That's what I'm gonna call this character. She's a banana lady. Um, <laughs> banana, la banana Nana is gonna be very fancy. Uh, we're gonna draw her hat first. Just a line at the top. It's gonna come up over the top of the banana. We're gonna leave a little room for the hat band like that. Okay, we're gonna draw a feather later if we have, um, if we have time. Um, and then we're gonna draw a nice big oval shape for her eye, oval, like this, okay? And then over here, right there, we're gonna draw a little bubble out like that. That's gonna be her other eye, okay? See? And she's looking at the bus, remembering the good old days when she was a student. Um, and maybe some eyelashes like this. Okay, next we're gonna draw, we're not gonna draw her mouth yet. We're gonna use the red color for her mouth. If you want to use black, that's totally cool. But I'm gonna use red. We're gonna draw a nice big V right there like this. That's gonna be her neckline. And we're gonna draw little scribbles like this. Like I said, she's very fancy, very uh, well-dressed as you'll see as we finish this. We're gonna draw a nice big rectangle for her arm, kind of comes down like that. And it's okay if it exceeds the width of the banana. We'll circle there at the bottom like this. Maybe a little handbag she's got. Again, any details you can add for something this minimal is gonna add life, thoughtfulness, energy. And when you're drawing like this, that's, um, that's key. All right, maybe a little button on her, on, her, on her wrist. And how about some buttons down her uh, jacket? How about uh, four buttons like this? We can draw her skirt like this. And again, I'm gonna just come, come out wide like that. Come up like this. Okay, it's okay if, it, if we still see the banana, maybe like a, some kind of a pleated skirt. We're gonna add some legs. These are just triangles down here. Look at this simple tri triangles like that, okay? Her feet, draw another line at the base of that triangle. All right, and then little U shapes, and then kind of come down for the heel, just like, like that, okay? And you can fill those in a little bit more to make them look a little more substantial, but that should, um, that should get you there, okay? Not bad, not bad. All right, let's draw her other arm as it comes out this way, right? And that's just a rec curved rectangle, a circle like this. And here's the kicker. We're gonna draw a line from here to the duck. <laughs> oh, she's holding the duck. <laughs> yeah. And let's draw some nice big eyes on the duck. That's gonna be a nice big eye right here, okay? And another eye over here like this. I'm gonna have my duck looking to the right, but you guys can do whatever you want. All right. And we're gonna draw a smile, but it's gonna it's gonna be a little weird because we're gonna exceed the width of the duck's beak for now, or mouth. But I promise you when we add red, that's gonna make more sense. Wing. And if you want to add some feathers, just a couple W's here, like that if you want. How about a wheel? It's a wheel duck. Mm -hmm. And then we'll add another 
curve like that for the other wheel. All right, very good. Um, all right, oh, you know what? We gotta add our car up here really quickly and then we'll get to red and then we'll wrap this part up because I wanna show you some other cool stuff. Fill in a window maybe. It doesn't have to be filled in black, it can just be lines. And just like we did with our bus, we're gonna put in some wheels like that. I would add some exhaust here, but I like it as an electric car. I think we're gonna make it an electric car so it has no emissions. We're gonna add some windows to our buildings. That's just gonna give us a sense of what we're looking at back there. Just some details like this. If you want to, you can draw just straight up black and white buildings up here as well. That adds some um, sense of place. But sometimes it's all you need. It's just a, just a hint, just a whiff of where we're at in this scene. Um, see what I mean? Yeah. Love all right. Love oh, what's that, Claire? I love it. And uh, oh, um, thanks. everyone's having fun. We're getting comments oh, like, good. I am too, you guys. I, I am too. <laughs> Let's switch over to red really quick because like I said, I wanna to get to our, um, our other drawing and I've already gone over my time with this part, but we're having fun, right? Oh, we're having loads of fun. Okay, good. All right, so let's, this is driving me nuts. So let's, um, let's add the uh, duck's bill and that's just gonna be a nice big red circle like that. See that? <laughs> Super simple and it totally makes sense now what yes. we did before. Yeah, let's, you know, this thing is wheels. This, um, ooh, I'm cutting myself off here. Um, we're gonna add a little dog back here. Banana Nana has a pet dog that she brings around in her in her duck carriage. <laughs> in her duck carriage. Um, and we're gonna come up like this. It's just gonna be like a super simple dog. Like that, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we're going to come down at an angle towards the back of the duck, just like this. Okay. Then we're going to add some ears like this. Okay. Now, if you want to, you don't have to, you can leave it open. You can fill it in. And that's her little red, it's going to be a little red dog. Obviously, we're going to have to switch back to uh, black to add our dog details. But that's going to be our dog is riding in the little duck uh, stroller. Let's add a banana nana's mouth. And I'm just gonna add a nice little, little smile just like that, okay? Now her face makes a little more sense. We're gonna add a nice flare um, feather back here like this, okay? If you want to, you can fill it in. I'm gonna leave mine open. Just a little whiff of a color there. Okay, what else can we do? Uh, oh yeah, we're gonna add some red lights to our bus, right? Like this and like this. The um, light up here. I might add a little black there in a second to, to uh, indicate the housing for the light. What else can we make red? What else can we make red? How about if we add some red lines to our sun to get some red up in that corner? How about that? That's cool. We can also add some small little red color to our flowers, right? And those are just little circles like that. Super simple, super simple. But look at the lovely scene we're making. And I don't know about, <laughs> I don't know about, you, I don't know about you, but my eye is going right here. I'm like, what can we do there? So I'm <laughs> gonna take a request. If someone wants to add, tell me what to add there. All right, let's see. We can, uh, we request, can add something. Come on, anybody what got a suggestion? What can we do? Draw cheese. What is it? <laughs> Draw some cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't, isn't that what I've been doing? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll draw some cheese. I'm yeah, that sounds or good. A pencil or a dress. There's a lot coming in. <laughs> Let's, um, I'll do cheese. That, that works really well. That was the um, first one. Thank you, Katya. <laughs> yeah. Let's do cheese. And for that, we're just going to do a line like this. And it's going to be a wedge of cheese. So let's see. How can we do this? kind of at a slight angle like that, up towards the bus, come down towards the flowers a little bit, almost uh -huh. like we're making a house shape. And then we're gonna connect this right here. Okay, connect these two right here like this. Okay, see that? And now we're gonna come down straight down like this. 
And you can see, you can see what we're going to do. We're going to connect it like that. Okay. Now what we we have a choice. We can color that in. We can color in just the top. We can color in just the side uh, with yellow. Uh, I think maybe it, let's make it Swiss cheese. <laughs> what? Um, that was an extra request from somebody else, actually. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm just trying to think how best Kristen. to solve. What's that? Kristen suggested uh, turning it into Swiss cheese, yes. Oh, good call, good call. I just don't know um, how to solve the uh, circles uh, in the Swiss cheese. Let's just leave them open like that. Nice. And then we can, yeah, and then we can color around those. I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna see how it would look just by leaving that white, this top part of the cheese white. Um, or you know what, maybe it could be red, like it's still in its uh, wax. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, doesn't that come in wax? Like the wheels of cheese that uh, come yeah. in red? Let's do that, let's add some right there. Gouda oh, is it Gouda? Well, this is Gouda a... enough. This is yeah, it's Gouda, Gouda enough. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean about the horrible puns? <laughs> All right, if you want to, you can leave this top part white. I'm gonna color it in like this. Like it still has its, the wax on it from the uh, deli or the cheese shop or Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. um, all right, one more thing we want to do is add our dog details, right? I'm gonna circle back for our uh, dog. Let's give him or her, whatever you choose, nice collar, maybe a little dog tag there like this. And how about the dog is kind of looking longingly at the cheese? Um, like this. And if you want to sort of drive that point home, you can do like a nice little dotted line to add some visual interest like this, right? That is one big piece of cheese. I don't know how I feel about the top part being red, but it's a cool shape. And you really, your eye, I'm not, I don't yeah. know about your eye, but my, my eye goes boom, 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 uh, red, red, red. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I think that that's, um, that might be worth, uh, that might've been worth our trouble. Nice, very good. All right. There we have it. I hope you like your shape drawing at home, the yellow shapes that we did, the yellow objects that we did. Really guys, and just using so three good. colors and white, of course, of the paper. Yeah, yeah. So I think it, um, it turned really nice, really fun. I hope you like that. Last thing, of course, sign your work. Mm -hmm. And whatever color you choose, I just did black, but you can use uh, one, two or three of the colors or whatever color you want. Yeah, nice. All right. With that, I think I'd love to move over to my drawing table. So that's where I'm going to draw. I'm also going to move this other camera over here so that you're able to see me if you want to over here. And I hope you can hear me okay still. Well, I can. Can everybody okay. hear? Everybody see everything? Please comment if you can't. Please what? I'm oh, just I saying, see. everybody. You know, share okay. if you have any issues, but we can all see it. I think it looks right, great. great. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, oh, let me move this over just a little bit. Seeing a little bit too much of my record player. Um, I have this, actually it's going, but it's not playing anything. I love listening to jazz music, um, you know, old school, you know, pop music. Um, it's just a nice way to kind of keep me loose and relaxed um, and inspired. Um, yeah. So I have a record player right here in my studio. I've got tons of records. You can see them behind me. I listen to those all the time. I've really kind of gotten into vinyl, um, you know, old school records. Yeah. It's delightful. Okay. It's really fun. All right. We're going to switch over to our drawing media now. We're going to try something totally different, very much still Linus inspired, um, where we're going to take some charcoal. If you have charcoal uh, or a pencil, that should work okay. If you have an eraser, that would be great. I'm using this kneaded eraser that I uh, bought especially for this so it's nice and clean <laughs> when we're done with this it's going to be all uh, charcoaly and, and uh, like we really used it which is really cool um, we're going to draw a shark today and it's a shark from this book by Amy Dutton and a shout out to all the New Jerseyans out there Amy is a uh, fellow New Jerseyan we're going to draw the shark from this book uh, using uh, Linus and Ernie's techniques of working together all right so 
you don't need a piece of paper this big, eight and a half by 11 is fine. Um, wh whatever you got there should be okay. All right, I'm gonna take my charcoal and I'm gonna draw a nice big, um, it's gonna be like a, like a rectangle of charcoal essentially is what I'm, what I'm going for. And I wanna get it, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a border. You can cover the whole page if you want. I'm gonna go right in like this. You're also gonna pick up stuff underneath your paper. It's almost like doing a, a headstone rubbing almost. Um, that's okay. I think that adds some real cool texture to your drawing. It adds personality to your drawing. So I'm not gonna worry about the little bits that I'm picking up underneath. Those are actually um, melted parts of my um, drawing mat that, that's getting picked up there. You can always move it too to escape that and do over. Okay. And you kind of want to do it, you know, fairly dark. Don't get too crazy. I know some of you are using pencil. That's okay if it's not looking this dark. That's all right. As long as you have enough pencil on your paper to erase and have it show that you've erased it, if that makes sense, you're good to go. Okay. All right. in there a little bit, a little bit more. Okay, I think that's probably pretty good. And again, I can always add a little bit more later if I need to. All right, we're gonna start drawing with your eraser, which seems kind of counterintuitive, but hey, if Linus and Ernie can do it, we can do it too. This is actually a technique called a reductive uh, drawing, and it's because you're actually taking um, media away from what you're working on, away from your drawing. It's kind of unique in that way. Um, when it comes to art uh, creation. I mean, a lot of times painters will scrape off art um, from, their, from their paintings, but um, often, more often than not, you're not removing things. All right, we're gonna start drawing our shark shape. And again, we're gonna start with super simple shapes, guys. Circles, triangles, crescent moons, all the lucky charm shapes. Uh, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna work into this um, drawing. And we're gonna start with a nice big circle, like right up in here, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna start to erase and smudge. It's okay if it doesn't look like it's gonna be erasing. We're gonna work it, we're gonna work it, okay? If it's not getting erased right away, that's all right. Okay, just make a nice little circle like this to start with, see that? I wouldn't smudge, if you're using charcoal, try not to smudge your uh, rectangle too much yet. That is going to provide a nice contrast texture wise with the part you're erasing with the shark's body. See what I'm saying? This is what we want for the shark's body. This is what we want for the water. Totally fine if you disagree and you wanna just go ahead and smudge. That's all right, that'll work as well. Especially as we, as we work in the, the digital aspect because when we're done with this, I'd love to take a picture of this and show you how I work um, digitally. Um, but let's keep going. Now, next, we're gonna draw a line, or erase a line rather, draw a line by way of erasing, right off the top like that, okay? And right off the bottom like this, okay? And we're gonna do the same. We're gonna kind of get in there and just erase this space in here as much as we can. Look at that, look at that beautiful charcoal just smudging and whirling and whooshing really satisfying to work media on paper, canvas. You never know quite what you're gonna get. It's part of the charm. Pat of the charm, as they say around here. Yeah, Boston very area. appropriate for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah. All right, you may be wondering, how is this gonna be a shark? Well, the next shape we add, you'll start to see how it comes into sharpdom. Let me uh, continue to knead my kneaded eraser. I need to knead. All right. We're gonna draw this sort of crescent shape, this sort of half moon shape off of the left side of what we've already done. And now you can start to see, I hope, how it's becoming a shark. Should I turn my camera around so that the, the drawing's right side up, Claire, or is it showing okay on your screen? I think it just depends where you're gonna put the fin. Right now, it looks like it's fine. Which side yeah, do you look at the fin? See, this to me is gonna be the, the bottom and this is the top. 
Uh, so maybe it's I should upside down for us. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I should um, rotate my camera somehow um, so that it's a little more. Right now, it, it makes sense. So right now. Yeah. 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 No, I think the, with the next steps, it's going to have to. I'm going to have to adjust it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think how to do that. Well, you could do it and just turn your paper so everyone can see the phone. Okay. All right. Because I know you want to get to doing something on Procreate as well. So. Correct. Correct. <laughs> All right. Let's keep going, gang. Yeah. We're going to add some, uh, some triangles here. At the, this is going to be my top of the drawing. Let me show you. Maybe I could do it upside down. Let's try to write it upside down. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to add a triangle up here. These are what I'm talking about when you're adding simple shapes. Triangle, boom, simple. Okay, right up there, erase that. How's that looking? Good. I'm just going to turn it upside down again to see how I'm doing with it. Okay. I'm going to ask you a quick question. Um, yeah. Jeremy from New Jersey and also Meredith asked, how old were you when you started to draw? Oh my gosh. Good question. Thank you, Jeremy. I was probably, I think I was really young. I think my, my mom told me my first drawing was a chicken. I think we still have it in the family archive somewhere. Um, so I was probably like three or four, but I loved drawing through kindergarten. I remember one of my first experiences with sharing my art with others was in kindergarten where my teacher asked everybody in the class, here we go, turn upside down again, we're adding another thing there. A teacher in my class asked everybody to do a drawing. I drew Spider-Man. And then she took those drawings and made copies of them, like photocopies, although in those days they were mimeograph machines. And uh, everybody got a copy of everyone else's drawing. And I just thought it was so neat to mm -hmm. see Everybody kind of, you know, quote unquote, enjoying my Spider-Man drawing. It's just really neat to see, you know, 20 copies of my drawing coming off the machine. Mm. I, I just remember that being very, um, very cool. And I guess I just, I just never forgot it. So I was pretty young when I, when I uh, started drawing and writing too. My first, oh guys, we're going to start, let me just quickly tell you. We're going to start uh, doing another triangle here off of the front. Okay, like this. You turn it around upside down. So it's right side up for you. See that? Mm -hmm. uh, my first written story was in second grade. We had like a school newspaper that published students' stories. And I wrote this mystery story. I think it was a ghost story because I loved um, Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew books. And so I wanted to write my own. And uh, that was my first published story was in second grade. Uh -huh. Then fast forward to, fast forward to, college at Northeastern and I had a comic strip every week called Duct Tape Man that was pretty much yeah somebody just mentioned Duct Tape Man yeah speaking of which yeah Ella, Ella did. speaking speaking of Spider-Man it was very Spider-Man like because he would use his duct tape to swing around and capture mm -hmm. crooks um but it was my <laughs> first paying job where I got paid to draw and Excellent. that was that was huge for me uh and it really kind of got me through college with you know a steady paycheck it was pretty neat all right let's um i'm gonna draw um i guess i could draw this like this for you we're gonna start adding face features and all that jazz now i'm gonna do my best to draw it upside down for you um that's gonna be a challenge but i think i can do it maybe i draw it even sideways like this is that all right claire like that yeah that looks great perfect and how did you learn to draw so well? <laughs> that's a question. Oh, goodness. Well, that's very kind. That's, um, I, I'm still learning to draw. I still, I don't feel like I've ever stopped learning. I don't feel like I ever want to stop, stop learning. Um, but thank you. I really just keep keeping on practicing, doing it yeah. every single day. Yeah. Um, doing it in, in venues like this at school visits. Oh, we're going to draw the mouth now, guys. The teeth, he's got four teeth, but they're just two W's side by side. Like this, here's one. Here's the another. The coming to life. It, it, to life. It's great. Yeah. Good. We're going to add some gills. Those are really easy to do. It's just three lines like this. Okay. And what else can we add? I don't know if we want to color in the mouth. Maybe we'll keep that um, separate. Uh, let's see what else can we add. What else can we add? Maybe just a little. 
smudge if you want to add some shading to the lower parts of our shark, we could do that. This. Okay. It's right. um, 20 to 12, just to give you, you've got 20 more minutes, but we can run over a little bit. All right, just... good, good, great. Yeah, I'm gonna switch over to the digital stuff in just a second. I'm gonna smudge the ground like this so it looks like um, the shark is swimming over. And we got that, we got that for free, really, just by changing the texture between what the paper is taking in and what we are forcing in by way of our um, smudging. So you can get a lot of different great effects by erasing, smudging, uh, leaving alone, um, all that stuff with uh, charcoal. It's really, really fun. All right. I hope your shark is looking good. Yeah. I'm gonna take this now. I'm gonna take this now and I'm gonna take a picture of it with my Procreate software. And I'm, I'm gonna show you a little bit of how I work digitally. That is to say, on the computer, because as I mentioned before, all of my books are created on a computer. Um, in fact, I just finished my very first book using just the iPad. I will often use um, my iMac, but this, this book, let me find it. Here it is. This book is called Shirk. It's by Jamie Swenson. And this, all of the art in this book is created on the iPad. It was my very first iPad book. Let me see if I can find a good spread. Here's one. Um, like I said, I had been using the iMac, uh, iMac. Um, oops. but um, mm -hmm. all of this was made on the um, iPad. I'm gonna show you using Procreate, which is the app I'm about to show you. Mm -hmm. um, let's do that. Let's, let's take what we've done here. And to do that, I'm gonna need to grab my, the overhead view. Okay, I'm gonna have to share my screen again. Let's do that. Uh, share content screen, okay. Start broadcast. Okay, now I'm gonna switch over to Procreate. Okay, here we are in Procreate. Uh, great app, it's about, I think it's like 12 or $14 on the App Store, very inexpensive, considering it's a professional level tool. Um, I love it. I'm gonna tap up here in the upper left where it says add, and I'm gonna take a photo. That's gonna open up my photo, my camera app, sorry. I'm gonna take a picture of the drawing we just did, as rough as it is. I'm gonna tap use photo, and that drops this um, digital version of our charcoal drawing right into Procreate, where we can start to manipulate it, add color to it, uh, what have you. Just get it my drawing easel. All right. Okay, I'm using, I don't know if you have my um, other view up, but I'm using my Apple Pencil now to edit this a little bit. I've got this um, photo on layer three. Layers are really cool. Layers are like, they're sort of like pieces of paper you can see through um, and change the order of, like if you want to use a layer on top of another. Uh, keep that in mind as I work because it's a really neat concept, oops. And uh, it allows a lot of power and flexibility when it comes to editing your art. Okay, I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna go hue, saturation and brightness. I'm gonna lighten this up a little bit because I feel like there's a lot of um, yellow tones and uh, darkness. So let's change the, um, no, I don't wanna do that. I wanna do the color, the saturation. Yeah, here we go. Okay, let the brightness, let's turn up the brightness a little bit. Turn down the saturation so it's more black and white. See that how you can make it more or less saturated. I'm gonna make it more white to indicate or look more like paper. Tap there. I'm gonna go up here. I am going to create a mask, which are a lot like real world masks in that it allows you to remove parts of your drawing that you don't want, but it does not destroy. I'm not erasing this. I'm simply masking it away removing it from um, visibility. You'll see here, I've got a layer mask associated with layer three. 
I can turn off that layer mask and turn it back on. And that shows that I have in fact retained everything that was originally in that scan. I'm just masking it out. Masks are awesome to use digitally uh, because you're not, you can always step back. You can always reclaim that which is masked out if you need to. Okay, let's um, move this up a little bit. I can also zoom way in, I can pinch in and you can see it's a little blurry because I wasn't holding it super steady, but you can really and go Ant-Man on this. You can really see the pixels involved here. Um, this is what we're painting with today. We're not painting with uh, charcoal or paint or pencil, we're painting with pixels now. And so we're kind of entering a new tool set, a new world uh, of, of, um, of color. All right, next thing I wanna do is, um, you know what, let's just keep going with the mask a little bit. And let's take out a little more of this. I just have to tell you, Scott, I've got people coming in on the chat saying their teacher went to school with you, someone's oh, dad no. worked with you, Emily Rent's oh. dad works with you. Oh, that's so lovely. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I think I know who that teacher is. I also want to give a quick shout out to my um, dad who's celebrating his birthday today. Happy uh, birthday. I hope he's Happy still there. Birthday, Mr. Scott Senior. <laughs> <laughs> uh, funny. Um, and yeah, they're tuned in as well. So it's nice to know you guys are out there. And uh, thank you for saying hello. And uh, thanks for spending time on this lovely Saturday. I know, you, as yeah, they say on the yeah. airlines, I, I know you have your choice of activities today, and I'm so glad you chose me. Sorry, Mr. Magoon Senior. <laughs> yes, no, I got you. His name is. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all right. I didn't know what you meant. Okay, so here we go. We've got our start kind of uh, separated from that background a little bit because I think there are parts of this charcoal I want to keep, and then there are there others I just uh, would try rather try something else. Okay, this is pretty rough, guys, but you're starting to see now the power of uh, this app. Uh, let's add some color. Let's add some color. Let's add some nice blue color to this shark. I have 16 million colors here from which to choose. 16 million. Fortunately, I can drag any of those down into this uh, checkerboard area and uh, create a palette. And that makes life a lot uh, easier. I'm gonna pick a gouache brush. I have so many brushes from which to choose, but today I'm gonna keep it pretty easy and just go with this nice gouache. And I'm just gonna start um, painting over this. And you'll see it's, it's looking like I'm painting over it. It does not look integrated really with the rest of the drawing. Uh, for that, we're going to turn to blending modes, and um, I think you'll get a kick out of that. That's pretty neat, and you'll be amazed at how much more this paint will look like it's part of the charcoal drawing in just a sec. And I'm not going to worry about staying in the lines, going outside the lines too much, because A, it's really easy to, um, to fix up, and B, I kind of like a little bit of uh, you know going outside the lines and staying outside the lines. It adds life to your characters, adds energy to your characters. And for something like this shark, for those of you who know this book, you know that's right where he lives. So it's perfect. I'm gonna change this blending mode. I tapped on the N on this layer and you have all these different blending modes. And as I cycle through them, you can see how it affects the blue color in different ways, depending on which uh, blending mode you pick. I'm gonna pick this um, linear burn one that I think looks kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, that looks like it's really kind of part of the of the charcoal a little bit more than it did before. I'm gonna use my smudge tool and smudge that in there a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Maria wants to know, what is your favorite thing to draw, Scott? Oh my gosh, I'm working on my um, first graphic novel right now and I'm loving it. I love drawing the characters that I've made for that book. There's a woolly mammoth, there's a passenger pigeon, there's a saber tooth tiger and a poison frog. And those guys, those characters have been so fun to draw in a comic style. Oh, um, yes. I just, I love it, I love it. We can't wait to see that. Oh, thanks, 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 thanks. All right, let's add a little shading. I'm gonna pick a slightly darker blue now. I'm gonna go over that same area just to add a little shading. Usually I have a little white on the belly of my shark, but I guess I'll forego that today in the interest of time. Claire, how are we doing with time? Oh, you're good. Um, you got about 10 minutes, but we could go over by five okay. or so. Okay, and I wanna have time for questions too. Yeah, I'm sort of like gonna throw in questions as we go along here. 
Yeah. So just add your questions. Everyone's buying your books when and this one when they, it comes out, the one you just mentioned. Is there a title for it yet, Scott? Oh, yeah. It's called The Extinct's Quest for the Unicorn's Horn. And it's out. Yeah, and it'll be out. It's from Abrams Publishing, mm -hmm. publishers of Diary of a Wimpy Kid and other great books, uh, including Nathan Hale books. And that'll be out October 5. Excellent. And I'm super excited about it. <laughs> great. I'm super excited about it. And I'm I'm uh, working on the second book right uh, right now. Uh, I've started, uh, started the second book. There's a, it's a, at least a two book series. Whether it goes beyond that depends on, you know, how it does out there in the world. Hopefully it'll do okay. Let's, you know what, these eyeballs are looking really uh, dull to me. Let's add some white to them. I'm gonna change back to my pencil tool. And So it's, a, it's really fun combining real world media like the charcoal we did with digital media. Oh, it, is. it looks great. Yeah, I'm going to add some, you know, light shading here. All over. Maybe, his teeth, maybe his teeth could be a bit whiter. Teeth could definitely be whiter. <laughs> yep, thank you. Perfect. Yes, do check out Scott's website, everybody. Lindsay just put his website in the chat. He's got more videos for you to totally watch and enjoy immensely, draw along, and you'll see all his books um, on his website and any other things you want to know about Scott will be on his website. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Are your children like... also um, into drawing, Scott? Yes, they, are, uh, they also love their video games, but they do like to draw. Mm -hmm. And um, they also like re reading a great deal, which is no small thing too. So I think between those things, who knows, maybe uh, we can pass on the family biz, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yellow teeth, somebody said. Oh, I think Samuel suggested yellow teeth. Oh, definitely. We got to let's add some yellow. Uh, to do that, I'm going to tap that yellow. And I'm going to go up here. Let's tap it again. And I'm going to drag this down right into it. And it'll instantly change it to yellow. And if it does, there we go. And if it doesn't quite get everything in there, I can do this. I can change this to alpha lock, which isolates just what's on this layer. Okay, so I'm only going to paint the white parts that are on this layer. That's what Alpha Lock does. It lets you paint just what's there. See that? I, don't do, I, don't, I can just. Uh, how how long does it take somebody to sort of pick up this technique? I mean, it's really fantastic. Thanks. And it takes a bit of practice, right? You have to sort of. Yes, but I got to tell you, Claire, it's amazing how far these tools have come in terms of ease of use yes. and uh, accessibility. I mean, it was. For years, uh, it was unless you had a Photoshop, unless you had Photoshop or Corel Draw or Corel Paint or mm -hmm. Adobe Illustrator and maybe a tablet, it was really hard to enter this sort of uh, this world. But now, with iPads and iPhones and Android uh, devices and inexpensive software like this, I love the yellow teeth. Um, you know, the barrier to entry is much, much lower and much more overcomable. Um, when did you start, Scott? Um, somebody was just asking, um, when did you first start using Procreate? Um, I started using Procreate probably three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been so fun. I'm gonna add some water. I'm gonna add it with a nice big watercolor brush, but I'm gonna do it on layer two to make it look like it's behind the shark. So I don't want to paint over the shark. Although let's, you know what, that'd be a good exercise. Let's do that. Let's move it up above the shark. And I'm just going to paint over like this. Okay. And look at all that beautiful texture that you get for free with this brush. Look at this. Like it looks very painterly, I think. Yes, yes. Um, and it looks like the shark is definitely underwater here, but a little bit too much stuff. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to move this layer underneath uh, at least that color and you can see all the eyes, his eyes are still white and the teeth yes. are still yellow they didn't get affected yes. by yes. that right let's move that, let's move that more there we go there we go um and let's change this mode now to something that works a little bit better i don't know that one looks kind of nice although we've lost our um back our ground you know what i'm saying 
if I, if we wanted to, we could um, lighten this. See that? We can change the opacity of a layer and knock it down a little bit. We can knock this down a little bit. See that? I see. Thank it's you. still pretty dark. Though. Everybody, everybody wants you to add things, but we are so oh, yeah. close to uh, coral, okay. other fish. <laughs> okay, let's add a um, yeah, let's add another fish. Let's um, let turn this off for a bit, or turn this layer down a bit, so we don't. Um... And whilst you're working on this, Scott, uh, way back at the um, when you were doing your first presentation on the book, yeah. Robert did. Robert, who's seven, asked. How did you do the last two pages of the book? Which is, you know, when you show the art, the end of the art show, and there's those um, big paint, you know, big illustrations with all the post-its, the little mosaic ones. Yeah. Did you do them using Procreate? Uh, that one I did not. That one I used uh, Photoshop. Okay. Um, but I certainly could have done that here in um, Procreate. It was very helpful um, to use Photoshop to duplicate all those post-it notes. That something like that was really helpful to just mm -hmm. uh, duplicate, you know, those the many squares that went into that mosaic. Yes. Uh, so that was fun. But that's a great question. Great question because um, yeah. you never know how this stuff gets made. Yeah. Uh, well, so. you're getting lots of um, compliments. What a beautiful drawing. And oh. how much life has been put into it. Now the colors add added. So wonderful. Oh, look at that cute little goldfish. <laughs> little goldfish there. I want to show you one quick thing too that I often demo in my um, talks when I talk about this shark. And that's how much life you can get out of out of your character's eyebrows. Bear with yeah. me as I, um, as I do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You would be amazed if you try this at home with your characters. Um, right now, it looks like shark could be saying, well, hold on a second, let me just finish this. And you know what? I'm going to take out these eyebrows, these eyeballs, using the mask, and put in these, put in new ones. This. Hold on. And that's showing up because that white is showing up because that's underneath where the white is. So let's move that up here like this. Okay, so now the shark's kind of looking more at the goldfish. Our eyebrows, right now, a shark seems to be saying, hey, fish, you look great. Let's go for a swim, right? Very friendly. But when we take yeah. those same eyebrows and move them down a little bit on top of our shark's eyes, now he looks a little more sinister. Well, now he looks a little sinister. But... Yes, he does. <laughs> now he looks a little more sinister, like, hey, fish, you look delicious. Let's have some lunch. <laughs> now, I think if you play around with where your eyebrows are on your character, <laughs> It, 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 you, can, you can get a lot out of that. Um, and the, the beauty with digital drawing is that you don't, they don't have to stay as eyebrows. They could be, for example, oh, gosh. <laughs> it could be the other fish's eyebrows. <laughs> it could be fish food and fish poop. Um, all kinds of different things. Digital drawing lets you experiment and play with your drawings in a very tangible, physical way that, um, you know, quote unquote physical way that um, traditional media might not. So it's very fun to work digitally, I found. Very forgiving, because you can always tap this in the lower right, there's this undo tool. Right. <laughs> so I'm stepping back in time, and I'm undoing everything I've done. I'm like, oh, why are you doing that? Well, just to show you what, I'm, what it is, but I can also do the redo button, and that's the lower right-hand arrow that points to the right. Just me forward um, in time. So I've got a few questions coming in. So Punita okay. wants to know, um, are the drawings and liners done using charcoal and Procreate? I mean, some right. No, those were all done in Photoshop using Photoshop, um, Photoshop and uh, some Kyle brushes in Photoshop. Kyle uh, is this gentleman who has made tons of brushes for Adobe Photoshop. And that's, those were all digital brushes. Okay. Very much like uh, you're seeing seeing here with this, excuse me, with this, uh, with this brush. So, right. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but. Um, so it has a similar yeah. sort of feel, but it's a different, yes, a whole different method. Um, yeah, exactly. Everdeen wants to know what is your favorite medium or tool to use? Oh, goodness. Um, I love working digitally. It's, uh, it's, 
it's when you're working as a commercial illustrator, you're working on a, on a, on a timetable, um, you're working with other artists, other authors, other editors who may want changes when the book is done. So di working digitally allows your book to be very, your work to be very changeable, very editable. Yes. Uh, so from a practical standpoint, it's invaluable to work digitally. So I love that. I love charcoal. Um, you know, I love the, this, I love crow quill. Um, pens, I used those for years when I was working on my um, comic strip, you know, and I've still got all my original pen nibs. I don't know if you can see, them, but I'm holding those up. Um, I don't know, really any, I love, I would love to get back to working with um, oils and, and uh, doing large canvas work. I think I'd like to do that um, in the not too distant future, get back into that. I think that'd be really fun. Um, yeah, yeah. Do. yeah, let me see if I can. Any other questions? Um, what would you recommend? Well, Punita's asking, what would you recommend for first timers? But I'm wondering, could you ask um, specifically what you're interested in, Punita? Do you mean working on the computer or do you mean getting started with any kind of art materials? Perhaps um, you can type in which medium you're wanting to get started with. So I'll just wait for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, she's, oh, she's saying which media would you recommend? So which, well, probably drawing to start with, right? Absolutely, yeah, there's nothing, nothing beats just basic draftsmanship uh, skills. That is to say, you know, basic drawing skills. Um, I think a good sense of composition, uh, graphic design, uh, layout, I think that will really inform how you approach drawing. Um, yes. You know, and, and working on light and shadow, and um, mm -hmm. I think that those all come first, really, and then you can kind yes. of branch off into media. Um, but yeah. I will say to, to toot the digital horn again, you can, I don't know, you can instantly work with different types of media here. And while you don't have the tactileness, you don't have the, you know, feel the paper underneath you, you can still get you know, looks that look like charcoal, that look like oil painting to get a sense of, you know, is this something I want to explore in the real world? So it's a nice quick way of, of diving in to a media that um, might be too expensive or you just don't want to commit to yet. Um, so. Well, we are sort of getting close to the end, but everyone can see how much was added to this charcoal, or original charcoal yeah. draw. <laughs> Right. Um, right. Good. So, yeah, I hope you like that. Um, it's so lively. <laughs> and it was so fun to see the expressions change. Everybody could tell how that really does change the whole atmosphere of the drawing right. as the characters. Um, so is there anything else, um, Scott, that you wanted to do to it? Or are we? I think that's uh, good for me. Let me switch right. back to my... Uh, yeah, let's see you in your studio so we can Where? see the yeah, just, you. Oh, you can see my record collection there. Come back that's on screen. My, <laughs> that's my record collection that you can see. Let me just um, yeah. switch my camera. How do I do? There we go. All right. Oh, yeah, you've got some good ones. Are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I, love, I love listening to, uh, to, to records, to music while I draw. It's, uh, yes, recommend. music and, and drawing go to work together really, really well. So, well, we can, we've had an amazing morning with you, Scott. Thank you so much for uh, joining us at the Society of Illustrators Saturday Stories. Um, we've had a great audience who really participated. I can't wait to see what they send us in and we'll share that with you as well. Great. Um, thanks to the Bruce J. Heim Foundation again for making this uh, a free uh, program for our participants. And uh, gosh, Scott, I hope we can see you live at the museum um, in, a, in an, another future time frame, maybe when your next book comes out or one of your future books, that graphic right. novel where everybody would love to know more about that. But if we can't do it live, we will love to continue doing them virtually. So we'd love to have you back. Um, so everybody have a fantastic weekend. Keep drawing. I hope you are super inspired. I know you were super inspired by today. Um, thank you again, Scott, and you enjoy your weekend as well. And happy birthday thank to your dad. You're gonna go silent. Thank you, Claire. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. See you next time, next month.